Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and updated our fetch character function to implement a simple layer of caching. As you can see here we simply check the cache to see if we have a character based on the ID that has been passed into this function and if it is non-null we return that character otherwise we make our network request and then update our cache here. Uh, so very simply here, if we were to select, let's say, Jerry Smith, we see a small loading spinner because we are fetching the information the first time we went to the screen. But if we go back and then we come to it again, we see that the data has been on the screen a little bit faster there. And that is, again, because of our caching layer. We're not having to make a network request the second time and so on uh, when we have our character already on board inside the app. So if you missed it, go ahead and check it out. It's uh, definitely worthwhile understanding how this stuff works, but I've actually made, I wouldn't say a fatal flaw, but more of an architectural flaw that I just want to point out here. We know this app abides by the MVVM architecture here, and that means that the general structure of our application looks like this, follows this diagram, right? Where we have our view layer here, we have our view model, and we have our repository layer, and the repository layer is responsible for interacting with the network or interacting with our onboard database to essentially funnel the information back up to the view layer here. If we flip back to the code here, we are inside of a view model, and we are making network or data related logic inside of the view model. Now, clearly it works. We've I just showed you that, and if you watched the last episode, you know that it works. However, it's not perfect for the architecture. So I just want to go ahead and clean this up, and this function is going to get a little bit simpler here. So I actually have it on my clipboard. I'm just going to paste it, um, and we will just talk about it in a second. So we have our character ID. Nothing changed here. We've defined the view model scope launch inside of basically the little declaration of our function here, so we don't have to have it inside the body. Just a little syntax thing here, but functionally it's all the same. Um, and then we get our response here. I'm actually going to change that. It's uh, not a response. It is a character. Uh, we ask our repository for this character, right, because that is this paradigm where the view model layer asks the repository for the data. And so we're doing that here, repository, get character by ID, passing in the character ID, and then we just bubble up whatever we get into the view uh, into the live data, which is observed at the view layer. And so if we dive into the get character by ID function, I've updated it slightly to basically do exactly what we were doing in the view model, but now in the correct place. So we simply you know, copy and paste it here. So we check the cache for our character inside of the get character by ID function in our repository layer. If it is non-null, we return our cache character. Otherwise, we proceed as normal here we have our little request. If it fails, we just return nothing. nothing. Um, then we fetch our, basically the rest of the information we need for the character. We save that in a variable, and then we update our cache and return that value here. So it's the same concept. There's really nothing new here other than where we are calling this code. And this is a little bit better for the architecture. And also now, if we need to use this function again for some reason, it's inside the repository layer, not the view model layer. So it's a lot easier to maybe have a view model that has two repositories instead of having a single fragment that is attached to two different view models and having to manage the data accordingly. So this is definitely the better way to go. If anybody caught it, if anybody was thinking it in the last episode, you know, good for you. I guess I didn't think about it until uh, after I published the video. But nevertheless, we are going to pick up here. So. Uh, today's video, we are going to go ahead and talk about implementing uh, da, 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 the all episodes page here, which is basically going to act very similar to the all characters, except it's going to be a page list of episodes instead of a page list of characters. And specifically, we are going to be making use of the paging three library that Google has recently pushed out instead of the paging two library that this one operates off of. So. I've actually gone ahead inside of our build.gradle file and updated a few things here. So I've updated an epoxy version here. And then as we can see, we've added the Android epoxy paging three, which is epoxy support for basically the display of the information, but falling in line with the paging three way of doing things, fetching the data, etc. And then here we used to have 
a paging version of 2.1.2, and we have upgraded that to 3.0. Dot o. So we are now running paging 3 inside of this project and we will build this screen here under paging 3 and we're going to go ahead and leave the characters here for the moment at paging 2 and we will maybe uplift this in the future, maybe not, I don't know how severe their deprecation is going to be if it's just flat out not going to work anymore. But if we quickly take a look at our character's data source, that is the data source that is fueling this entire page here and allowing us to page all the characters, we can now see that there is a slash through the object that we are extending from, and it now says that it's deprecated. Please use the paging source, which is abiding by their paging three guidelines. So just to show you here, we are running some deprecated code, but we can see that it does work um, you know, as we would expect and we're going to go ahead and uplift this page or at least implement this page starting off with paging three so let's jump right into it and so here we are at the documentation for our paging three i will link this in the description of the video but full disclosure here this is the first time that i've actually implemented paging three so we're going to cross all these bridges together and uh, i hope that's exciting for you but what I do know, I have looked at it a little bit, what I do understand about the paging source, which is the new data source object, is that there is specifically one function here, the load function, that essentially gets called over and over again, and you're able to fetch the page number through the params.key value. And so if we take a look back at our code here, inside of, um, uh, open this up here, but inside of the characters data source, the page key data source, there were three functions that we had to override, the load initial, the load after, and the load before. Those have all essentially been condensed into one particular function. Uh, Google understood and realized that a lot of the code between, uh, I think it was load initial and load after was literally copy and pasted, and if you take a look at our code here, it is very, very similar outside of the params.key here versus the page index of one, the rest of the code is exactly the same. So they've streamlined this for a little bit for us, they've condensed some things, and by implementing this uh, paging source here, we now only have to override one particular function uh, to actually fetch the data and whatnot. So it seems a bit cleaner, and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense once we start diving into the code for us. So let's start here, let's get our paging source up and running here, and uh, let's get it in the context of our application here. So inside of our, do we have episode? Nope. Okay, so we're just gonna make a very simple package here. We're gonna call this uh, episodes. We're going to move the episode list fragment into the episode package and refactor that. Very nice. Um, and then inside here, we are going to define a new Kotlin file and call it, call it the episode uh, what is it called? Paging source. There we are. Episode paging source. Make that a class. Probably going to need a handful of things here right off the bat. We're going to need a particular repository, which doesn't exist at the moment, but I do know we are going to need a, a coroutine scope here. And then we'll eventually need a little bit of the repository, but we will get to that. So we are going to go ahead and define this as an extension of the paging source and we are going to keep it an int to episode. Make that an object here and then we will uh, control I to inter implement the necessary members here. The get refresh key, I'm just going to bounce down to the bottom here because I am not entirely sure what we need to do with that yet, but inside of this load function here, we can take a look at the documentation and kind of get to where we need to. So we can take this here, the next page number, or let's just call it, I don't know, yeah, page number, is going to be our params.key, and if that is null, then we're going to use one. And then we are going to need to make our network call with the key here, and then we are going to need to return a load result uh, dot either page or error, depending upon how, uh, you know, if we have the information. So inside of our page here, I'm just going to say data is equal to an empty list. And then our previous key is going to equal, 
uh, let's say no for now and then otherwise the next key is going to equal the page number plus one which will work here but we are gonna maybe create another function to actually get the uh, appropriate information out from our network response to find the next key and then the previous key here uh, I'm gonna maybe just define this a little bit here so that we can load backwards as well and say the previous key is if page number equals one then we're gonna say null else page number plus one no excuse me minus one yep and then we set it here inside of our previous key inside the load result here so essentially if our page number is one it is the first page there is nothing before it so we just return null otherwise if we're on the second or third page we just say page number minus one, which will give us the first or second page. So the paging will work properly in the backwards direction there. Uh, I'm gonna also add a to-do to clean this up with network information. And then flipping over to the documentation here, I think we're really just gonna copy and paste this implementation for now. I don't really see this, well, I hopefully, hopefully this isn't too much of an issue here, but uh, we might as well just do what the documentation documentation says for the time being here. So the little roadblock that we need here is our repository layer. So inside of this uh, package, we're going to go ahead and create the episode uh, repository. And we're going to have to create a suspend function to fetch our episode page. It's going to take a page index, which should be an int. And then it's going to return uh, a class that we haven't made yet. And we need to go ahead and now set up our API client and our, our service here. So I'm going to say get episode page. It's going to take the episodes page. It's going to take a page index. Again, it's going to return a simple response of type any for the time being. And then we are going to say return our safe API call Rick and Morty service dot. We're just going to create a function with this exact same name. So we'll paste it in and pass in our page index. So now this thing's freaking out, of course, and we need to go ahead and just clean this up. So we will create a get episodes page function here. Uh, episode, or sorry, uh, it's just page. Oh no, it's going to be like this with a query param. So we're just simply going to paste that in. We'll delete this stuff. And at the moment we have any, so that should stop freaking this out. And then this guy here should say val request equals our network layer, API client, get episode page, passing in our page index. We're gonna have our little check here to say if our request uh, failed or our request is not successful which by the way yeah is successful checks for failed so we can actually consolidate this to just if it is not successful we will uh, return I guess we're gonna do null here for now and then otherwise we're just going to return a random object at this moment um, okay, so we have a little bit of our skeleton here. Sorry if I blew through that, but we have created our episode repository. This has a function that's going to go ahead and interact with our networking layer, which we've defined here to actually, you know, utilize our safe API call uh, to make sure we are wrapping all our calls in a try catch so that nothing happens, nothing crashes the app if we are running into an issue. And then we've gone ahead and just defined the declaration for our function here. Uh, for the endpoint specifically inside of this service and this API client makes use of that. So uh, I think the last thing that I want to do here for this episode is get this particular type here cleaned up. So we're just passing any through all of this, but obviously that is not the correct type here. So taking a look at our documentation, if we look at our episode schema, oh no, yeah, okay, so we need to look at get all episodes. And this is going to have basically this little info object again, and then the array of results here. However, I do think we have this as an object here. So that is good news. And then we're just going to go ahead and create this little object ahead of, ahead of it or 
along with it. So inside of our network, we're going to make the response here get episode episodes page response. It's going to be a class. I'm going to take a look at this because it's the exact same. We're actually just going to create a small data class right here that is called a page info. Paste it in right here, call it page info, and then we can just reuse this object here because it's going to be the same for uh, both classes that need uh, or that define the paging response here. So we can copy all of this actually and close it and then we can paste it all in here and pop the data inside of or in front of this class. So this is all good. We have this info here, except our result is a list of not get character by ID response, but get episode by ID response, which we have uh, in our package here because of the work that we've done previously inside of this project. So with this information, we can just go ahead and copy this. Our Rick and Morty service is now going to define a response uh, of this type and then we're going to go ahead and also pass that type in here and then we will bubble that all the way up so this is going to be our page we're just going to say if page well maybe we'll say page request yeah a little bit more descriptive here and then we'll have to figure out exactly what the domain layer is going to be here yeah, and for now, I guess we can just make use of the exact same. It's going to be the get episodes page response, uh, and then that will bubble up the page request dot body here. Up. So we do have our repository layer up and running here. We fetch the episode page by page index. We have set up our networking layer to go ahead and hit a brand new endpoint that will eventually return an object of type get episodes page response and then we just do our classic check here to make sure that we have the data if it was you know successful the network request then we go ahead and continue to return the body of our response here we will make use of this repository right here inside of our paging source we have now injected it into the constructor here and now we can go ahead and clean up some of this other stuff here that we need to in order to get this paging source up and running. But I think this is enough for today. I am going to pause the video here. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like on the video if you are enjoying the content. If you do notice that you are not subscribed and you have been enjoying the content, please do subscribe so that you don't miss out. But obviously only if you want to. I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do. And I will catch you in the next one. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks.